So, an overview, first of all, very quickly, of the physical states of matter. Gases differ substantially in their properties from liquids and solids. We all know that. Uh, uh, gases, for example, are highly compressible. You can take a pump and you can pump a whole lot, of, a large volume of gas into the tires on your SUV. You, you do have a yes, SUV, right? Uh, you can pump a whole lot of air into the tires on your bicycle, uh, and uh, that compressed air provides the qualities that you need in the tire, the uh, uh, shock absorbing characteristics and, and so forth. Uh, gases are quite highly compressible. But if you think about liquids and solids, they are much less compressible. Any scuba people around? Nobody? Yeah, OK. We got, we got one scuba person. Uh, every so often, if you're a scuba person and you have a tank, you have to have it pressure inspected, right? Uh, by law. And uh, the first time I did any scuba diving was back in the 50s, before you were all born. Uh, and so there weren't many scuba divers around at that point. Uh, and I got to be around when they were pressure testing my tank, which I really didn't use very much. But the key to this is how they do it. Because in order to find out whether the tank is going to blow up under pressure, if you put a bunch of air in it, it's liable to blow up and level everybody that's around. So they do something different. Do you know what they do? Yes, they use water. They pump water into the tank. And water doesn't compress, almost negligibly. So, if the tank has a flaw in it and it splits down the side, water squirts out of it, but nothing explodes. But if you pumped the tank up with high pressure air and the tank split down the side, it would go off like a bomb. So that illustrates the difference in compressibility. Gases are highly compressible. We're, we live in a, in a city that does a whole lot with pipelines, compressed gas pipelines. Uh, and the reason why gases are highly compressible and liquids and solids aren't has to do with the nature of the particles at the atomic level. Also, gases are thermally expandable, much more so than is the case with uh, liquids and solids. And the volume change with temperature, with a given temperature change, is much greater with gases uh, than for liquids and solids. Now, uh, one other thing is gases have a very low viscosity, meaning a low resistance to flow. That's the reason we can use pipelines to pump natural gas from where it comes out of the ground, uh, the gas uh, uh, wells, and pump it through the uh, appropriate metal pipe to get it to somewhere where it can be used without using so much energy that it's pointless to do it. Uh, so gases have low viscosity, so you can pump them through a pipe uh, with relatively little energy loss. The flip side of the coin is because they have low viscosity, if you have any holes in your pipeline, they're going to escape out the holes much more rapidly, the uh, gas particles much more rapidly than liquid or certainly solid particles would. So um, this is a pipeline center. And it's rare when I have a class this size where somebody doesn't have uh, a family member or a friend that works in the pipeline industry. Anybody ha work in the pipeline industry? Yeah. Okay. It's not as many as it used to be. But there are, there are a number of people still working in that important area. Okay. What this leads up to is the fact that gas has very different density values than liquids and solids. Uh, 
gas density is given in grams per liter, whereas liquid and solid density is given grams per milliliter. If we look at oxygen, oxygen gas under regular conditions has a density of 1.4 grams per liter of gas, whereas water in a liquid state at the same conditions has a density of 1.0 grams per milliliter, a thousand times smaller volume. And of course that has to mean there's a whole lot more particles in the one milliliter uh, uh, that in, in a liquid of a given volume uh, than there is in a gas of a given volume. And this little uh, animation sort of depicts um, what the kinetic molecular theory says about the three states. Over here on the left is solid, and the particles are very close together. They're oriented in a fixed geometry, and all they do at room temperature is jiggle a little bit. Okay. Uh, if you look at liquids, the particles are almost as close together as solids, not quite, but there's no three-dimensional um, fixed structure. The, liquid, the particles of liquids move randomly, but very close to one another. And finally, when you get to gases, the particles are much further apart, and they move randomly as well. In that respect, they're like liquids. Uh, but the density is so much smaller because each gas, um, well, each sample of gas fills up whatever container it's put into. Okay, so um, what that means is the gas particles spread out randomly and fill up the container. And so the number of particles per unit volume for a gas is much smaller. Also, this property leads to gases being miscible. That is to say, uh, let's suppose that I brought with me a bottle of uh, concentrated ammonia water. And I tripped over this wire, I fell on the floor, and I spilled the whole ammonia. Now, even if there weren't any uh, uh, air being circulated here, Pretty soon, the people in the front row would like to be somewhere else. The gas that comes off, the ammonia gas, mixes immediately with the air. And it does this uh, according to reasons that the kinetic molecular theory uh, explains quite adequately. And in fact, we breathe, as you know. Would you mind closing your computer? You? Yes, would you please close it? Thank you. Uh, you know that you breathe, every time you take a breath, you, you breathe a fairly substantial mixture. Okay? It's got oxygen in it, that's a thing, and we're thankful for that. It's mostly nitrogen. It's got some argon, some water vapor, carbon dioxide. Living in Houston, there's a lot of other things in there, too. It's a homogeneous mixture, and um, it forms spontaneously. Okay, now let's suppose that uh, we wanted to measure a gas in the laboratory. Uh, the qualities of the gas are such that even though it has mass, it's a little bit tricky to measure the mass. And oftentimes in the laboratory, what we'll do instead of measuring the mass of a sample of gas is we will measure its gas properties. That is to say, its pressure, its volume, its temperature. It doesn't mean to say you can't measure its mass. You can, uh, but it's typically done the other way. So the first thing I need to consider for you today is the question of how you might measure the pressure of a gas. This is done with um, laboratory instruments called barometers if you're going to measure the pressure of the atmosphere, or manometer if you're going to measure the pressure of a sample of gas that you ladies might have in the laboratory sometime next week. Okay? Uh, a gas, when you put it in a container, exerts pressure on the walls, and you understand that if you think back about what that little animation looked like. Those gas particles were flying around randomly, and every once in a while, bang, they're going to bounce into the wall and bounce back, 
And by doing that, by hitting the wall and bouncing back, they exert a pressure on the wall. The aggregate of all of those bounces is the gas pressure. Uh, and uh, the gas itself exerts this pressure on the walls of a container at a level which depends on how many of the gas particles hit the wall, how fast they're going in the, in the aggregate. Okay? Uh, the pressure is e uh, expressed in force per unit surface area. And you're familiar with this, I think, uh, force divided by area. Uh, somebody told you somewhere along the line that the pressure of the atmosphere uh, that exerts force on all objects, including us, is 14.7 pounds per square inch. Pound is a force, and square inch is an area. There's a square inch, and uh, somebody probably told you that if you think of a column of air going up to the top of the atmosphere on a square inch here, the mass or the effect of a gravitational field on the mass of that much gas produces 14.7 pounds of, um, of, of force. Pounds is a force. And uh, divided by one square inch gives us 14.7 pounds per square inch. So if you think about somebody, let's say my size, I have a lot of square inches. And that would mean, of course, that uh, I have uh, many, many pounds of gas pushing down on me. And yet I don't collapse and fold up, right? Uh, and the reason for that, of course, is that I keep breathing, uh, and this keeps the pressure inside my body the same as the pressure outside. And of course, every one of us has been doing this since our first day on Earth, and we know that this, this is the natural thing. We have pressure inside, pressure outside, we don't even know. Okay, now with that in mind, I want to show you a Bill Nye, you know Bill Nye the science guy, does uh, uh, different kinds of uh, science exhibits. And one night I couldn't sleep and I was watching the Craig Ferguson program and Bill Nye came on. Uh, and I thought, well, this might be worth keeping. So I turned the TiVo on. Uh, and here it is. Crazy talk. Oh, look, come on, blow something up, for God's sake. Yes, we'll blow something. Yeah, we're going right, to blow some safety blow glasses. Safety, safety glasses? First, Thanks sir, very much. Or safety so what's going on, then? Tell us what happened. We are boiling water oh, in the oil. I don't need glasses for that. Well, oh. steam is coming out. You feel it? It's hot. All right, yes. Yeah, okay, yes. so uh, we forget, many of us, forget that water vapor is a... Uh, gas. Yes, a oh, gas. Yes. You see? You could get your own show, man. Yeah, I know. Uh, so, it's a gas. We forget that. So the gas, the boiling uh, water vapor, has driven the air out of the oil drum. Right. And so, uh, and it's driven it out uh, through this opening, which we call the bung hole. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else in there? Uh, maybe some fresh paint. Mm, yeah. So uh, what we'll do, we'll put the bung. Are you okay? Steady. Careful. <laughs> Ooh, bring it back to memory. Yes, yes. Those were the days, yeah. breathing steam out of oil drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you, okay. Anyway, so uh, this is the bung, which goes yeah. in the bung hole. Gentlemen, if you would, turn off the gas. Oh, uh, the yeah. scientists over there, I can yeah, tell. Yeah, we have some offstage methane distribu distribution system. So we'll I put get that, too. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So I thought there'd be a King Kong joke on the bung, but that's all right. No, that's no, you. That's right. Well, is that you why you kept saying bung? So well, that's just a funny name to me. Now, right. did you, uh, I was hoping you'd sc screw down the bung with the bung. Oh, well, I always yeah, I'll yeah. screw down the bung. Sure. Why have we got the kiddie wading pool here? What's going on with What that? we're going to do... Ow. Ow. That's hot. Yeah, so, uh, right, that's from the... The, the, the boiling, boiling water. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Is your degree in wise ass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by so... So what we're going to do, at great expense, we're going to yeah. bring out two assistants. Ah, scientists, look, yes. they're wearing white coats. And what we're going to do is cool it off. Yeah. Well, well, before you go, gentlemen, before you go, we're going to cool it off. Cool it off. And then the water vapor yes. will turn to a liquid. 
and take up hardly any room at all, and you'll have a virtual vacuum, and then it will be crushed as though by a giant's fist. Well, that you just did it there. What the well, hell was that? You're ignoring it. It just banged. Uh, well, we're trying to be calm. To show that fighter pilot calm. Yeah, well, what's uh, going on see then? See how it's steaming. The thing was hot. Yeah. So as it cools off, this looks the liquid turns, kinda... the gas turns to a liquid. Yeah. It takes up hardly any room. Yeah. And then atmospheric pressure. Yeah, this is, it's a bit like a raffle. The laws of yeah. physics. And then it should crush. Yeah. So King Kong were here. King Kong himself. Congratulations on your engagement. Congratulations on that. Good night, everybody. Good night.